Welcome to our channel. Enjoy listening to the audiobook. Write your feedback in the comments. Michael McQueen, Mindstuck. Mastering the art of changing minds. Ever tried convincing a mule to dance? You might have better luck than trying to change a stubborn mind. Now, the thing about stubbornness is that it's not actually about being dense. It's about being stuck in mental quicksand. People are just naturally champions at defending their battlements, refusing to let the drawbridge down for new ideas. That's the human mind. This is where persuasion comes in. Nailing the art of persuasion is a game-changer for both your career and personal life. Believe it or not, a whopping 40% of people's work lives are spent in a tug-of-war trying to pull others over to their side. And guess what? The old tricks of coercion, incentives, and even bulletproof logic often crash and burn against the fortress of stubbornness. Why? Because they miss the mark on how our quirky brains tick. But don't despair. There is a silver lining. Just as horse whisperers can get the most stubborn stallions to prance, there's a way to turn the most rigid of opinions into putty, without any fireworks. The psychology behind stubborn minds. Changing someone's mind will often feel like trying to push a boulder uphill. That's because our brains are wired in a pretty stubborn way. There are two sides of the brain duking it out. The inquiring mind, which loves to think things through logically, and the instinctive mind, which is all about those snap judgments based on emotions and gut feelings. And guess what? That instinctive side is running the show 95% of the time. So, a lot of what you do is more about feeling than thinking. Now, when you're dead set on something, it's usually your instincts taking the wheel, not your logic. And there are three big reasons why you cling to your beliefs like a lifeline, which are your identity, ideology, and intuition. Your identity makes you favor ideas from your tribe and reject anything from the outsiders. Your ideology filters out anything that doesn't fit your worldview, and your intuition often trumps facts. So, when you're trying to get someone to see things your way, their brain is asking, is this going to mess with who I am, what I believe, or what feels right to me? If you want to get through to them, the first step is to recognize where they're coming from and navigate those tricky emotional questions. The second step is assembling your arsenal of persuasive techniques, which consists of five key components we'll be tackling in the next sections. Technique number one, reframing. Why does spending $100 feel like a sacrifice at the grocery store, but a celebration at a fancy restaurant? It's all about reframing, the art of painting the same situation in a new, more palatable light to shake up even the most stubborn of opinions. There are three slick ways you can use reframing to change people's frame of reference or point of view. First up, you've got priming. It's like warming up people's brains to see things the way you want them to. This could mean throwing in a few carefully chosen words or numbers to nudge someone's thoughts in your favor, or perhaps reminding them of an experience that aligns with your agenda. Or how about this? Ever thought something was way better just because you were told it was from some fancy place? That's priming, weaving its magic, making you appreciate things more based on your expectations. Next up in our reframing strategies is contrast. This technique is all about clarity through comparison. In a campaign, doctors who initially resisted adopting hand hygiene practices shifted their perspective when they saw a sign stating that hand hygiene prevents patients from contracting diseases. Their current behavior conflicted with their commitment to patient safety. That stark contrast got doctors thinking twice, showing how pointing out the gap between what you believe in and what you're actually doing can give you a real wake-up call. There are several other ways to go about using contrast. You can ask people to explain their views, which often exposes the flimsy logic holding them up. You can also have people state intended behaviors out loud to make them more likely to follow through. The third way you can use reframing to persuade is through the power of words. The word pre-owned 
sound so much better than used, even though they mean the same thing. Tailoring your words to strike a chord with your audience's values can make your message hit home. Humor, rhymes, and a bit of surprise can also make your point stick like glue, breaking down walls and getting folks to listen with an open mind. Reframing is less about the meat of your message and more about the dressing, how, when, and in which context you present it. Master it, and you're not just communicating, you're compelling. Technique number two, building affinity. Harvard researcher Alison Wood Brooks decided to dive into an interesting question. Does moaning to a stranger about something banal like rain make them more inclined to lend you their phone? She cooked up a little test where one participant went to a stranger and immediately asked to use their phone, while another kicked things off with a nod to the rainy day blues. Tossing in a simple, I'm so sorry about the rain, before asking for the phone, shot up the acceptance rate by a whopping 422%. Turns out, just bringing up the rain can spark a bit of a bond. This is what we call building affinity. At the heart of it, building affinity is all about crafting a real connection where people feel they get you, like you, and see a bit of themselves in you. Often, it's those tiny hints of being in something together that flip the script on how people interact, feel, and act around each other. There are three golden strategies to not just get along better with others, but also sway them gently to your side. First off, approach disagreements not as battles to be won, but as chances to build a connection. Instead of gearing up for a showdown every time a debate brews, Try seeing disagreements as a collaborative effort to find truth or common ground. Socrates himself was a fan of acquiring knowledge through losing arguments. Sure, clinching a victory in an argument might feel sweet, but it could sour relationships. Aim for impact rather than proving a point. It's all about fostering progress and mutual respect, moving forward together rather than apart. Affinity building strategy number two is to not shy away from showing your vulnerabilities. Admitting to the flaws of your standpoint can be surprisingly powerful. Showing your vulnerable side isn't just bravery. It's a trust magnet. This honesty and transparency release oxytocin in others, signaling you're trustworthy. Opening up about your uncertainties invites others to drop their guard too, creating a genuine connection. A dash of self-deprecating humour doesn't hurt either. It makes you more relatable and likeable. The third strategy for building affinity is finding common ground with someone, especially with folks who march to the beat of a different drum. You can do this by aligning on shared goals and values, echoing agreements by saying I agree, and introducing new ideas with familiar positive words. Even mirroring someone's body language or speech patterns can draw you closer. No magic is required, just good old brain chemistry at work. And don't underestimate the power of discovering you share something as random as a birthday or a love for obscure indie bands. It's these little threads of similarity that can weave the most unexpected bonds and open a person up to your point of view. Technique number three, preserving the other's dignity. Telling someone they're wrong about something often feels like telling a cat to get off the counter. They just stare at you and proceed to knock over your glass. This might be a funny way to think about it, but it also highlights a key point in persuasion. Pushing too hard against someone's beliefs can lead to stubborn resistance rather than a change of heart. To win someone over, it's all about letting them save face and preserving their dignity. Fear is the big bad wolf when it comes to someone's dignity. It's not the change itself that freaks people out, but what comes with it, loss of pride, power, or the comfort of certainty. To get past this, you've got to make the other person feel safe and understood. Ever heard of the feel-felt-found technique? You acknowledge how they're feeling, share that you've been there too, and then gently introduce how you shifted your perspective. And remember, any new idea you're proposing should feel like a cosy sweater, not a scratchy woolen blanket. Familiarity and predictability are your allies, not your enemies. Next, we have the magic of asking questions. Not just any questions, though. 
the kind that makes the other person do a bit of soul-searching without feeling like they're being interrogated. It's about leading them to articulate and then recognize how unrealistic their own expectations or reasonings are. This approach is way more inviting than lecturing or demanding change. Open-ended questions starting with why, what, where, or how should be your go-to. And make sure you always leave people with options. When someone feels like they're being herded in one direction, they'll resist just out of principle. But give them a choice, and suddenly they're much more on board with making a decision that aligns with your ideas. A little autonomy goes a long way. Offering a few choices, about three to four, just enough to give a sense of control, can make all the difference. A simple trick is saying something like, if you can't do it, I'll understand. This gives someone the option to reject your request, which significantly increases their willingness to comply. Effective persuasion is less about convincing someone and more about facilitating a change. It's about starting from a place of respect for the other person's sense of self and ending there too. Technique number four, harnessing the power of conformity. Ever found yourself adopting habits or opinions just because they're popular within your group? That's your brain's doing, pushing you to fit in because, frankly, it craves belonging like oxygen. You're basically programmed to tweak your behavior to align with the crowd. And it's this very tribal instinct that you can tap into to sway others. It's how you harness the power of conformity. There's three main ways you can harness the power of conformity to persuade. The first strategy is social proof. Seeing peers endorse something often prompts people to follow suit, driven by the instinct to look to others for direction in uncertainty. To play this to your advantage, use numbers, benchmarks, or tags like popular to paint ideas as universally admired. Don't forget about FOMO. If an item or experience is running out because everyone wants it, people will want it more. The second way to harness the power of conformity is to use herd mentality, which basically means groupthink. Usually, if about three quarters of a group gets behind something, it gets everyone else on board too. To use this to your advantage, you need to be careful of your timing. It's easier to jump on an existing bandwagon than to get a new one rolling. You can also use activities that sync up a group, such as singing, marching, or sharing a laugh. Essentially, when groups move in sync, they end up on the same wavelength mentally. And finally, the third strategy for harnessing the power of conformity is reciprocity. Do someone a favor and watch how they're keen to pay it back, sometimes with a little extra on top. Give out favors or special privileges right off the bat, and you're essentially laying down an unwritten rule that they owe you one. The favors that really hit home? Those that are meaningful come as a surprise and feel like they're made just for them. Directly asking for a tiny favor from the other person can also work wonders. This act of helping you out nudges them to view you more kindly since offering a hand fosters a sense of goodwill and connection. Understanding and playing into these psychological underpinnings can be a game changer, whether you're looking to influence a group or just one person. The innate desire to be part of something, to conform and cooperate, holds significant sway over people's actions and attitudes. Technique number five, employing empathy. You've been there, right? Trying to get a friend to try sushi when they're really not into it. It feels like mission impossible. But picture this. If you could see sushi through their skeptical eyes, you'd probably know exactly what role would pass through their defenses. This is the essence of empathy, slipping into your friend's mindset and really getting where they're coming from. That way, when you make your point, it lands just right. One way to employ empathy is to humanize issues and principles. Bringing a human touch to big ideas and issues can truly work wonders. When you make it personal, your arguments gain weight and become much harder to brush off. Instead of talking about a crowd, zoom in on one person's story. Facts and figures might catch attention, but it's the individual tales that really stick, changing hearts and minds. To weave that magic, dive into personal stories, the emotions, 
the faces behind the facts, and the tactile experiences that stir empathy within people. Another empathetic approach involves playing with hypothetical questions and engaging in thought exercises to crack open those stubbornly closed minds and encourage more nuanced thought processes. These aren't just any questions, though. They're the kind that make people ponder other sides without getting all defensive. These are questions that start with, could it be possible that, or how likely is it? When you use them, you're nudging someone to think beyond their usual victim-villain tales and to see beyond their own nose. And if you really want to drive your point home, show, don't just tell. Make the person empathize so they can really feel what you're talking about. Help them step into the shoes of someone they totally disagree with. It can be quite eye-opening. Whether it's through a real-life plunge into someone's world or using tech like VR to simulate experiences, it's about making the abstract tangible, making them live it, even if just for a moment. So, next time you're itching to change minds, remember, empathy is crucial. Combine it with the four other techniques we've just learned and watch the walls come down. To Mindstuck by Michael McQueen, you've learned that while changing stubborn minds is challenging, it is possible with the right techniques. People cling to their beliefs because they're tied to their identity, ideology, and intuition. But by leveraging proven persuasion tactics, you can gently guide others to new perspectives. The next time you face stubborn resistance, don't bulldoze ahead trying to win the argument. Instead, reframe their thinking. Connect with compassion, preserve their dignity, leverage their tribal instinct, and be empathetic. Do that, and you may just witness once rigid minds opening up to fresh possibilities. What do you think? Would you give it a try?